So before we started the next video, I just want to big up my work colleague and friend, Miss Hussey, who made me this amazing uh, apron for my birthday, which is in a few days time in July. Thank you, I'm really clever. This is not written on, this is all done um, via the machine, but all kind of by hand. Amazing, all right, so thanks again. So the recipe today involves courgette spaghetti. It's obviously made up, but um, you might call it spaghetti or strips in all the supermarkets pre-done, but there are machines that can do it as well. This is an example of one. This is not mine. This was given to me by a, um, a friend across the road. Never tried it before. Let's see if it works. It probably could be a lot of old faff, but let's have a look if it works. I'll do this one. Well, there we go. Like I said, a lot of old faff. So <laughs> the issue is, if you look, I've got quite a lot of courgette spare, so you have to cut it into the right um, thing. Lovely, I'm not surprised she got rid of it. But there we go, it's all good, and I'll be using that later in the recipe. Here we go then, so really simple. This dish is, um, so it's spaghetti, or courgette spaghetti with broccoli, tomatoes, chili, and a bit of parmesan. You wouldn't really have it on its own, but it's great with something. So I'm having it for dinner tonight, actually. So I'm gonna have it with some chicken and some mashed potato. Absolutely perfect. Comparatively simple. So here we have some broccoli. You use 10 stem broccoli, which is like the long one. With broccoli, people actually often throw away the, uh, the roots, the stalk, you don't have to. You can eat this. Um, if you're gonna eat it, like stir fries, for example, is really good. So you literally just peel it for a stir fry and then chop it into little pieces. Um, soups, you want to make um, a, a vegetable soup or something, absolutely fine, no problem at all. All we're going to do then is take the stalks off, the broccoli, and notice the technique. So you're kind of cutting the trees off, or the stalks, uh, the branches rather, off the tree. Okay, what we're then going to do, let's get them there a little bit smaller first, and then cut them down. Right, so this is going to go under the grill uh, for about... 10 minutes or so, so you don't have them too big and also not too small, if they're too small, it just burn under the grill. So the broccoli goes on a baking sheet, that's probably okay there, and that's probably okay. What we're then gonna do is we're gonna get our tomatoes. I've got plum tomatoes, because they're nice and small. Let's open the tomatoes. Better to cut them in half, I would uh, suggest. One quick way, by the way, if you've got loads of tomatoes to do, you need to be probably a bit more experienced with this, but maybe put some in, in the middle, put your hand on the top, I mean, literally just put the knife in. Obviously you've got to be confident. Put the knife in the middle and you've halved a lot in one go. But can't be bothered doing that. Use the bridge hold. Right, so we're gonna season these with a little bit of chili, chili flakes, salt and pepper, olive oil, and we're gonna put them under the grill for 10, 15 minutes, seems a long time. What you're actually looking for is that um, this gets a little bit charred. You do want that kind of charred flavor. Only half a teaspoon, um, unless you like it particularly hot. Uh, these are chili flakes, there's some crushed chilies. You can use fresh chili as well. A little bit of salt and pepper over the top and some salt and some olive oil, okay? You can use, um, we get extra virgin olive oil and you can just have other virgin, um, other virgin olive oil. Essentially the extra bit, when they're crushing the olives, um, the first pressing of those olives are what is what is known as extra virgin, normally seen as in superior. What they would do is they kind of mash it all up again, squeeze it again, and the second pressing then is just olive oil. All right, so the extra virgin olive oil is, is actually better, but if you're cooking with it, it's, you know, it's, it's fine. Little drizzle of oil on a swamp it, but you do want a little bit of oil. That is about, I'd say a teaspoon of oil. Give it a little whoosh around, just so we're all coated with everything. What we're then gonna do is put that under the grill, 
for about 15 minutes. Remember with the grill, you leave the door open, which I know is a bit unusual. Leave the oven door open. They've just gone under the grill. As we're doing that, let me clean this quickly. I said about the, the courgette and I used that slightly ridiculous machine. The other way of doing it is to take both hands off. Again, a bit more skillful this way, but you want to do cut long strips. Now, the spaghetti was very thin. This therefore needs to be very thin as well. Notice using the claw grip, slice straight down. Again, knives are important. You couldn't do this with a little knife. You do need a decently sized knife, but keep it as thin as you can. At that point, just lay them on top of each other to make the spaghetti. Okay, I think the machine is more consistent, certainly, but when you saw me use the machine earlier, you don't get the length. You have to sort of shorten it to fit it in the machine. So, but it's whatever. All, all will come out the same, as long as it kind of loosely resembles a vegetable spaghetti, and obviously when we cook it, it will go floppy. There we go. All right, so that's the hand cut. Um, sp uh, because that's spaghetti, and I'll show you how to cook that in a second. So you can see the spiralized uh, courgette spaghetti that I did earlier via the machine. See, so quite different to the one that I made uh, myself. It's difficult really um, by hand to actually to, to get exactly the same, but it would all taste the same. Um, so let's put that in. We're just gonna season with some salt and pepper now. A bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, whoops. All over the place, bit of salt. What I'm now going to do is cover this with cling film and this will go in the microwave for about two, three minutes until the courgette is soft. No water in here, There's a bit, I mean the courgette essentially is probably 50% water, so there's no water. Um, as it cooks, the juice will come out anyway. Um, okay, so cover with cling film in the microwave for around two, three minutes until the courgette is, is soft. So the veg has been cooked under the grill for, it was about 10, 12 minutes. As you can hopefully see, it's just kind of blistered. Um, it's all about textures here, so the tomatoes will be soft. These are cooked, but just about cooked. Um, the courgette spaghetti has been done. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one on top of the other. Try and keep it on there. Now, what we also need is a little bit of Parmesan in there. Again, it's a texture, sort of real salty Parmesan. So you can just grate some on here. I'm doing it on the baking tray because, and the reason for that is I actually want some of the juice that the tomatoes have made. All we're then gonna do, quick whiz together. And the idea being, just like you would pasta, so imagine this is pasta, the courgette spaghetti, is that just like you would normally, you toss the, um, the flavoring, whatever it is, a meat sauce or a vegetable sauce with the pasta. That's what you do. So, here's my bowl. Let's just put some in. So healthy, and it's very summery and light. I'll make this look nicer in a second. Some tomatoes on the top. This would actually be really nice if you had some fish with it. So let's say you cook some, uh, some salmon or a tuna steak or similar. This would be really nice underneath that. So let's just clean the plate up. It's really well seasoned. What we can do is just add a little bit more Parmesan on top because hey, why not? There we have it, really simple. Courgette spaghetti with roasted broccoli and tomatoes with a little bit of chili, a little bit of Parmesan. Enjoy, show me some pictures if you make it, and I'll see you all soon.